And today is the first Sunday gathering, so we'll have the Lord's Supper today. I want to start out by uh, thanking everybody for uh, your faithfulness in this past year that's gone by. It's been a year that we never expected. Amen. But God did keep us. And so here we are uh, this morning. Um, we're going to have our scripture and prayer today by Suzette, who will also uh, uh, give us our announcements today. And then our worship will be uh, pr uh, offered to us today and offered to the Lord by our worship team. So I'm going to go ahead now and turn it over to Suzette so that we can go ahead and get started. Amen, everybody? Amen. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone, and Happy New Year. So as what Pastor Pat said, um, year 2020 has indeed was certainly a very um, strange year. It was everybody's first time to experience a pandemic, um, but it was also a good year. We have experienced and felt God's faithfulness and God's love towards his children. Um, please open your Bibles to the book of Philippians chapter 4, verses 12 to 13. So Paul said, I know what it is to be eat, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Amen. Amen. Let us all uh, pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness in our lives, Heavenly Father. We thank you for gathering all of us together the first Sunday of the year 2021. Lord, we will continue to put our hope, our faith, and trust in you. The past year has been in the past, O Lord God, and we will live in the present, O Lord God, knowing that you are the God who will always be the same and faithful yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We lift up everybody in prayer today as we worship you with our songs, with the message, and with our tithes and offerings. Lord, we thank you for your love and we look forward to the wonderful things that for what 2021 has for us, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. 
Amen and amen and amen, church. Thank you, worship team, for setting the table so well for this day of worship. Amen and amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise, y'all? Amen. And can we give can we give our worship team a hand clap of praise? Amen. It's not easy to put all that together in this kind of format, but thank you, worship team. Thank you, worship team. Well, today is our first Sunday of 2021. And, and you know, just a few days ago, uh, today is January 3rd. It was just a few days ago that we bid adieu or say goodbye to the year that was, and that year being 2020. The year, as we all know, will probably be forever engraved in our minds and our hearts. And I don't necessarily mean in a completely bad way or a negative way, but in a way that really impacted the lives of everyone around the world. Amen and amen. You know, there's a famous poem and the poem goes like this. The poem, in, in this poem, the, the, the person is sitting and they hold, they unfold an atlas. I don't know what an atlas is. And they unfolded this atlas. And as they unfolded the atlas, they ran their hands across the atlas. And the question was, where does it hurt? And the answer, church, was this. Everywhere. 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 2020 was a year where it hurt everywhere. There was no corner of the globe. There was no part of the world that was untouched by the pandemic, among other things. There was no part of this United States from coast to coast that was untouched by the pandemic. Certainly 2020 was a year unheralded like any other year. Amen. But church, I want us to I want us to begin today, if you haven't already begun, is to think about this notion, and I'm going to talk about this some more in my message, of letting go. Letting go. You know, when one year closes and the next year begins, that is a year of reflection, a time of reflection. That's also a time, what, of transition, a time of change, a time of newness, a time of saying goodbye. Amen? We're going to focus this morning on a couple of passages from Deuteronomy and Joshua. And the message today is called Letting Go. So coming first from Deuteronomy chapter 31. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 1 through 3. And I will be reading from the New Living Translation. Deuteronomy 31, verses 1 through 3. It says there, When Moses had finished giving these instructions to all the people of Israel, he said, I am now 120 years old, and I am no longer able to lead you. The Lord has told me, you will not cross the Jordan River. But the Lord, your God himself, will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy the nations living there, and you will take possession of their land. Joshua will lead you across the river, just as the Lord promised. And now we turn over to Joshua, the very first chapter of Joshua. I'll be reading from Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you 
to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Continuing in verse six, be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Let's pray. Almighty and wonderful God, we thank you once again for this day. Thank you for this first Sunday of 2021. Thank you, God, for how you kept us through 2020. And thank you, God, that we are here today. We praise you, O Lord, for all that you have done for us. And we worship you, God, for who you are. God, you have heard our worship in the scripture. You have heard our worship in the prayer. You have heard our worship in song. And now, Lord, we pray that you would also hear our worship in the word. And we pray, God, that it would be sent forth as you have intended and in the same way that it may be received. Thank you, Lord, for your holy word, the lamp for our feet, which guides our path. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The first Sunday of 2021, the year that was 2020. You know, typically at the end of a year, or typically whenever some, something new is getting ready to begin, that usually means something old is ending, right? Something ends and something begins. And generally, generally church, when there is an ending and there is a beginning, when there is a holding on to, and when there is a letting go, amen, there is reflection. Letting go requires reflection. I wonder how many of you all, as, as, as we got closer to December 31st, I wonder how many of you all took some time to remember and think about what was, about what 2020 was. And, and even more than that, church, I wonder how many of us took that a step further and spend some time in introspection. So e even more than reflection, even more than that, did we spend some time in introspection? Y'all know what I mean by introspection? Introspection is reflection turned inwards. In other words, I can reflect about the events of the year. I can reflect about the pandemic. I can reflect about the political unrest. I can reflect about all the social justice issues and all of those things that came with it. I can reflect about the events of the year and I can go down them like, like I went down a list and mark each one by a date and time. I could do that. I can reflect on that. But, but to introspect church is to take that reflection and turn it inward 
In other words, it's not just remembering, it's not just reviewing the effects, the events, the dates, all of those things of the year. Amen. But it is an inward reflection or a careful examination of self. It is a careful examination of thoughts and a careful examination of feelings and a careful examination of actions that were done in light of those thoughts and feelings, in light of those things that I'm reflecting on. In other words, the pandemic occurred. Okay, okay, I'm reflecting that. That's a reminder of this year. The pandemic occurred. As a matter of fact, we're still in it. But to introspect, to, to have introspection about the pandemic requires me to think about myself in the middle of that pandemic. What were my thoughts? Indeed, what was going through my mind? What was, what was in my heart? And what did I do in light of those thoughts and feelings? Amen? I could, I could take what, what has been occurring politically in this country and in the world, and I can say, well, yeah, this happened. I can mark a date and a time on a calendar, but, but to introspect means what? It means what were my thoughts and what were my feelings and what did I do in light of those? And the same with all the uh, racial unrest, all those social justice things that occurred every time, but seem to have blossomed in the year 2020. 2020 was a year unlike any other year. But I hope you understand what I'm saying, church. It's not merely reflection to think about those things, right? But to put them into introspection. Who were you in the middle of all those things? That's introspection. Now, I told you that I'm going to preach today about letting go, and I am. But church, the reason I talk about this is because until we have, until we have reflected, indeed, until we have done some self-examination or introspection, until we have done that, we can't know what it is that we need to let go of. Amen? You know, we see all these things, goodbye 2020, or shut the door on 2020. But you know, church, we have to know what we're letting go of. And further, we have to know why it needs to be let go of. Amen? And we can't do that letting go of properly until we have done reflection and introspection. So I, I wanted to mention that to you all, church, because I pray that, you know, it's the third day of the new year. It's certainly never too late to do some reflection and introspection. But I pray that, that as you were ushering in the new year, that you had spent some time in reflection and introspection. Introspection, amen, is challenging. Because introspection calls us to an honesty about ourselves an honest self-examination of ourselves in light of all of the circumstances. Amen? So, so I pray if you haven't reflected that you would reflect. If you haven't done some introspection that you would do some introspection. Amen? And that's all I'm going to say about that right now because I want to get into our message. In today's scripture, we see a letting go a time of transition, much like the transition that occurs at the beginning of any major change, and most certainly that occurs in the entering into of a new year. And church, transition also occurs when God is about to do a new thing. Do you all believe that today? Can I, can I see by a show of hands that you believe that transition occurs when God is about to do a new thing? Amen and amen. God is about to do a new thing. Well, here we see in the scripture the new thing that was done. Uh, we're going to take a look at Moses and Joshua. And there are three things, church, I want us to look at. The first thing I want us to look at is the reflection on the letting go. Reflection tells us what needs to go. We can say, well, let's just get rid of all of it. Amen? 
wait a minute, maybe there's something that God requires that we keep for now. So reflection helps us to understand what needs to go, what needs to be let go of. Now, the whole of Deuteronomy, and if you're in the older kids discipleship, you know, when we talked about Deuteronomy, the whole of Deuteronomy uh, pretty much are the three sermons or addresses of Moses. Moses spent some time from the beginning of Deuteronomy, from chapter third, from the beginning chapter one, all the way through 30. 31, as a matter of fact. Amen. Moses sent some time, spent some time in reflection, in reviewing, in reminding the Israelites of their time from Mount Sinai to where they were at the present day. Amen. And, and Moses's reflection was very detailed, y'all. Moses's reflection was very detailed. In Deuteronomy chapter one and verse one, we read this. It starts out by saying, these are the words that Moses spoke. And thus begins the first message of Moses to the children of Israel. Chapters one through four in Deuteronomy encompass a review. Moses spends some time reviewing what they had been through, the highs and the lows. Moses spends some time uh, reviewing, God did this, but you rebelled. Moses spent some time in reviewing. Part of Moses' reflection was in reviewing the events that occurred. That's reflection. Amen? In chapters 5 through 26, Moses switches gears and his reflection becomes or takes the tone of a reminder. In chapters 5 through 26, Moses spends some time reminding the children of Israel of, their, of God's providence and God's provision. Amen? So, so Moses' reflection was first a review, and then it was a reminder. And then Moses spent chapters 21 or 27 through 30 in Deuteronomy as a time of reckoning or re uh, uh, reviewing, taking what was reviewed, taking what the reminder was, and a time of reckoning. In other words, he told the children of Israel in those chapters that you are to keep the covenant. He had reminded them of all that God had done for them. He had reminded them of the promises of God, the covenant of God. And here, as he's getting ready to close out the chapter, close out his life, he was, he was bringing them to a reckoning and telling them that they needed to keep the covenant. They needed to continue living and worshiping God. They needed to continue to remember the covenant. They need to continue to obey. Moses reminded the people that God will fight for you. But there was expectations from God. And that was the reckoning that Moses was presenting. He said, you have to obey. You have to live a life of worship. Amen. You have to live a life of obedience. And you know what? God will fight for you. You have a choice. Moses went to great lengths in his reflection. He went to great lengths to review, to remind them, amen, to reckon with them of the things of God. What were the things of God that he had to remind them of, the things that they had been through? He reminded them of God's faithfulness. He reminded them of God's love. He reminded them of God's glory that followed them as they, as they picked up the camp and, and moved from camp to camp. Amen. He reminded them of God's grace. He reminded them of God's will for them. He reminded them of God's holy word. In, in Deuteronomy 6 and 23, Moses reminded the Israelites. And here is, here is going to be the segue into the rest of the message. In Deuteronomy 6 and 23, Moses reminded the Israelites, God brought us out. Talking about Egypt. God brought us out that he might bring us in. Talking about Canaan. So Moses spent 
all of that time reviewing, reminding, reckoning. And here was a time now, amen, for them to move forward. Because after all, Moses reminded them, that's, that's why God did what he did for us. Why he kept us. Remember, their shoes and their clothes didn't wear out after 40 years of wandering. Amen. Moses reminded them, God brought us out of our Egypt. Because he intended for us to go into Canaan. Amen. Reflection. Reflection. What needs to go? What needs to be let go of? Back to our focus scripture, Deuteronomy 31, verses 1 and 2. God, or Moses said to the children of Israel, when he had finished giving these instructions to all the people of Israel, he said two things. Two things he communicated. Moses said this. I'm no longer able. Now, Moses was not talking about ability that we get from the grace of God. Amen. He was not talking about that kind of able. But what Moses said here is, I'm no longer able, meaning my time is done. Can you imagine Moses leading the people of Israel through all that they had been through, through all of the, these years, and now Moses is telling them, no more, my time is done. I'm no longer able. That's the first thing that Moses said to them in verses 1 and 2. The second thing Moses told them in verses 1 and 2 is, God told me I'm not going. You recall, God told Moses, you're going to lead them to their new thing. But sorry, Moses. You can't go in. What needed to be let go of? The first thing we see that needed to be let go of as it pertains to what was the new thing that God was going to do for the children of Israel is that first of all, Moses needed to be let go of. They had clung for so long to Moses as their leader. Moses was the one who received the instructions. Moses was the one who delivered it to the people. And, and for all those years, Moses did that and did it well, I might say. But now Moses recognized and Moses told them, children of Israel, it's time that you let me go. Moses needed to be let go of. And Moses recognized, I'm no longer able. My time is done. And God told me, I'm not going. Moses needed to be let go of. The second thing that we see that needed to be let go of, we find in verse 6 of that same chapter of Deuteronomy. In verse 6 of Deuteronomy chapter 31, he says, So be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid and do not panic before them. So first of all, Moses to be, needed to be let go of. Secondly, fear needed to be let go of. The words of God, amen, as they were told, do not be afraid and do not panic. God is doing a new thing. But you need to let go of that fear if you're going to enter into that new thing that God is about to do for you. He's telling them. Can you all relate to times of change in your life, to times of transition, to times of new things? Can you relate that maybe there was some element of fear moving into those new things? Moses writes here, don't be afraid. Let go of that fear. First you let go of me, and then you have to let go of fear. In Deuteronomy 31 and verse 8, and in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9, we see another thing that is required to be let go of. In Deuteronomy 31 and 8, it says these same things. Do not be afraid. We talked about fear. 
But then he said this, do not be discouraged. God, when God does a new thing, not only does fear need to be let go of, but discouragement needs to be let go of. I will tell you this church, discouragement can be as paralyzing as fear. Discouragement can be as paralyzing as fear. And here we read from the word of God as the children of Israel are getting ready to move into their new thing, to transition into their new thing, that they are told, let go of fear and let go of discouragement. God is about to do a new thing. Hallelujah. We talked about this in the, in the children's Sunday school this morning. Joshua and the spies and the perspectives of God in, in the report. Amen? Moses needed to be let go of. Fear needed to be let go of. Discouragement needed to be let go of. And in Joshua chapter 1, and in the B part of verse 7, we see this, note takers. Be careful to obey all the instructions. Do not deviate from them, turning to the left or turning to the right. Church, when it comes to the new things in life, when it comes to the letting go, when it comes to the transition, deviation or disobedience needs to be let go of. In other words, when we move into the new things of God, stay on that path that leads you into those new things. Do not turn to the left. Do not turn to the right. That's a picture or an image there of disobedience. He's saying there, as you move into the new things of God, do not deviate from what God has called you to do and continue to obey. That's what Moses spent so much time in Deuteronomy reminding them. Listen, God gave us instructions. It is our charge to obey. Obey. And as you move into this new thing, as you follow Joshua into this new thing, amen, he said, you need to continue to obey. Fear needs to be let go of. Discouragement needs to be let go of. And disobedience or deviation from God's instructions needs to be let go of. Amen, church? But look, it was not all negative Nelly. In the same vein that Moses used to communicate those things that they needed to be let go of, amen, Moses described the release of those things or the letting go of those things. So Moses said, here are the things you need to let go of, among other things, but here is what you have in the letting go. Deuteronomy 31 in verse 3. He says, Moses says to them, after he told them, you have to let go of me. In, in verse three, he says, but the Lord, your God himself will cross over ahead of you. And in Joshua 1, 5 and 9, we read these words from God. I will not fail you or abandon you. So what do we have in the letting go? When we let go, when we have the release of those things that we are to let go of, what do we have, church? Well, I don't know about you, but I'll take the presence of God in my life going ahead of me, not failing me, not abandoning me any old day. And the first thing that, that Moses told them is, you got to let go, but look, God's going ahead of you. And what did, what did he say, Moses? God is going to be with you all the time. What do we have in the letting go? Church, we have the promise of God that he would be with us. We have the promise of the presence of God. And we have the assurance that God will not fail and God will not abandon us. Even in the midst of the hard things, 
in the midst of the things that are scary, in the midst of entering into a new thing that we don't know and not fully understanding what the road lies has ahead for us, amen? We can be take assurance that we have the presence of God in the letting go. And not only that, no takers. In Deuteronomy 31, 3 and 4, and in Joshua 1 and 5, not only do we have the presence of God, we have the protection of God. God told them, I will destroy the nations, and no one will be able to stand against you. Powerful. What is it like to have God on your side? Amen? God said, not only do you have my protection or presence, you also have my protection. So when you're letting go of who you followed for so long, that being Moses, when you're letting go of your fear, when you're letting go of your discouragement, when you're letting go of that deviation from left to right or the disobedience, be assured that you have my presence and you have my protection. Amen, church? And amen. Reflection tells us what we need to let go of. And then we let go of where we have the release. Finally, church, we have the results of letting go. And church, for the children of Israel, the results of their letting go was that they entered the promised land. Knowing that they had the continued presence of God. So when they entered the promised land, not only did they have the continued presence of God, we talked about that a minute ago in verse 5, I will not abandon you. But look, going to Joshua chapter 1, amen, in verses 7 and 8. Let's read those again for, for emphasis. He says there in Joshua 1, 7 and 8, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. This is Joshua now. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. And then in verse 8, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. So you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. What are the results of letting go? The continued presence of God. And the prosperity or success that comes from God. I'm not talking about millions of dollars in the bank, y'all. I'm talking about success or prosperity that comes from God in whatever form or fashion God deems it to look like for you. But there are two things that are required. There are two things entering the promised land that that, that prosperity comes from. And that is what? First of all, our obedience or staying on course. Stay on course, he writes. And the second thing is connected to the first thing. The second thing is what? You've heard me say it like a broken record, stay in the word. Joshua's reminder was this, take this book of the law, study this book of instruction, amen, continually. Study it, meditate on it. Don't let it depart from your heart. Church, I pray if you haven't already been in the habit of this, that as we, we are here, it's not too late, we're on this third day of 2021. If you are not already in the habit of this, that you would get yourselves in the habit of staying in the word continually. That means every day partaking of the food that God has given you for your soul. For your life. For your ability to let go. Amen. And amen. The greatest example, church, we have of letting go, we'll find in the book of Philippians. And some of you may know where I'm already headed. Philippians chapter 2, 
verses five through eight. The greatest example of letting go to begin his new thing was Jesus himself. Verses five through eight in Philippians second chapter says this, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. And when he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Jesus himself experienced perhaps the greatest transition that one could, could experience. Jesus' transition including a letting go of all that he enjoyed in heaven. Jesus had to let go, it says in the riches of heaven, he had to let it go, why? All for the sake of mankind. The greatest example of letting go church is Jesus Christ himself. I dare say we have never been asked ourselves to give up something to that degree, amen? Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. He said, I can let go. I don't have to cling to equality with God. I can let go so that mankind may be saved. Amen. You know, for the children of Israel, the letting go was that they could enter a new thing. In the new year 2021, what is it that you need to let go of? We all have something we need to let go of. Are you walking in fear? You're walking in discouragement? Are you walking in the misery of self? Sometimes we need to let go of ourselves so that God can enter in, amen? Our transition began at the moment of our salvation. Amen, when we said yes to God and God entered in. We were like balls of fire. We were on fire. How are we today? There's something today that you need to let go of. Amen. That God may enter in and do that new thing in you as we begin this new year. What are you holding on to so tight that you're immobilized? Remember the story of the rich young ruler in Matthew 19. He told Jesus in Matthew 19, Matthew 19, verses 16 to 22, church, and we're almost done. Matthew 19, amen, verses 16 to 22. The rich young man said this. He said, he came to Jesus and he said, teacher, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus said, why ask me about what is good? There's only one who is good. But to answer your question, if you want to receive eternal life, keep the commandments. And, and the rich man said to Jesus, which ones? And Jesus said, you must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. Honor your father and mother, love your neighbor as yourself. And the, and the young man said to Jesus, well, look, I've done all of that. What more must I do? And we know in verse 21 that the, Jesus required of this man, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. And when the rich young man heard this, we all know the story, y'all. He went away sad because he had many possessions. 
He was not willing to let go of an area one that he might transition into a new life with Jesus. Amen. Church, what are you, what, what is it that you need to let go of this day? What are you holding on to so tight that you're immobilized? I want to conclude with this. Isaiah 43, verses 18 through 20. Isaiah had already given a record of all that God had done in the previous verses of chapter 43. But in 18, here comes the verse. He says, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? Church, God is entertaining, or not entertaining, God is entering into us or with us into a new year. Amen? I pray, church, that if you haven't already, that you would spend some time in introspection. Be honest with yourself before the Lord. What is it, Lord, I need to let go of so that I may enter fully into what you have promised for me in this year, 2021? And I tell you, if you go before God in that humble and honest demeanor, God is faithful and he will show you. Amen, church? And amen, church. Listen, I'm going to hearken back to those words of Moses. God brings us out of some things so that he can take us into new things. But you have to leave some of those things behind in order to move on in order to be successful as God deems success. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to turn it over right now to our diaconate team for our uh, Lord's Supper. All right. Can you hear me? Okay, uh, let's turn our Bible to 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 to 31. For I receive from the Lord what is also passing to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke and it said, This is my body, which is the which is for you to do, this, to, to do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to ex examine ourselves before the ate and the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on ourselves. That is why among you, Many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if you were more discerning with regards to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Let us examine ourselves as we pray. Almighty God, we are blessed for another year. And uh, we're ready for a press start to prioritize your word, Lord Jesus. And now we invite you to our hearts as we take uh, communion. We praise in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. So now we're ready for the bread. uh, All right. Um, Let us pray for the bread. Take out your bread. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, thankful for everything you've done for us. Thank you for reminding us of things that we have to let go so you could enter in our lives for new new things in life, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you left, let go of the glory in heaven to come to this earth as a human being so you could be the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Thank you for going to the cross. Thank you that your body was broken so we could have forgiveness and healing. And we ask you and for us and we ask you to help us always to remember and understand your sacrifice for us and appreciate everything that you've done for us and help us to lean on on all your promises. And we thank you so much in Jesus name. Amen. Let us eat the bread, break and break. Let us pray for the wine. Lord, thank you for this morning, Lord God. Thank you, Father God, that you have given your son for us, Lord God, to die on the cross, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for, thank you, Lord Jesus, for shedding your blood on the cross for our sins. Thank you for your love, for your mercy, Lord God, and the forgiveness, Lord God, that you've given to us. We are indebted, Lord God. We are grateful, Lord God, because of you. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Um, thank you for the wonderful message, Pastor Pat. For our announcements, we want to remind everybody there will be a teen discipleship on Friday at 7.30 in the, at night. Golden Saints on Saturday at 5 p.m. and to be followed by the Bible study at 8 p.m. Um, Sunday school at 10 a.m. to be followed by worship service at 11 a.m. And please save the date for our first council meeting of, for the year 2021, which will be on January 17th. More details to follow on what time it will be. And for all the discipleship group, please um, submit the dates on our next meeting um, to Pastor Pat. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for, for the wonderful worship today. And I do pray that all of us would just, uh, as we enter into 21, 20, 2021, that we would just be encouraged because we know that God will be with us, amen, and that he will never fail us and he will never abandon us, amen. But as, as, uh, as Cello said last week, Cello, I'm not going to let you forget this. As Cello said last week, let's make this be a year of being about our father's business, amen. A year of being about our father's business, just as Jesus did. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Wonderful God, thank you once again for this day. Thank you once again for for the worship that we offered up to you in song, in scripture, in prayer, in the word, and in, in our celebrating of the Lord's Supper. Lord, we just want to thank you for everything you have done for us as we think about 2020. And God, we want to thank you for keeping us. Lord, it was certainly a challenging year, Lord, but you were with us, and it was your presence that kept us. God, we just pray as we enter into 2021 that we might understand that it is still your presence that will be with us as we enter into this new year and into the new things, God, that you would have for us this year. God, I just pray as we do enter into this year that you would open up our eyes, the eyes of our heart, eyes of our souls. God, that we might see the new things. And God, that we might recognize the blessings that we have in you. Help us, God, to always encourage one another. Help us, God, this year to be better builders up of one another. 
No, this world would just seek to tear us down, but Lord, we ought to be builders up of one another. So I just pray, God, that we would be better encouragers one of another in this year, 2021. I pray, God, that we would love one another better, that we would forgive one another more. God, that we would pray one for another daily for strength and for wisdom and God, for your grace. And I do pray, God, that whatever may come our way in this year, that you might find us, Lord, walking in this year in whatever circumstance we have. You might find us, Lord, walking in this year with hearts full of thankfulness for your faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And church, now for the benediction. Now all glory to God who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. All glory to him who alone is God, our savior through Jesus Christ, our Lord. All glory, all majesty, all power and authority are his before all time and in the present and beyond all time. And church, on this first Sunday of 2021, may we say together, Amen! Amen. I, pray, I pray we all be blessed today, amen, whatever it is that we do, and, and let's just remember to be about our Father's business, amen? Amen. amen. All right.